Time is flying by, and we've seen a lot of change in college football, both on the field and off the field. The offenses in college football are becoming more multiple, and defenses have adjusted, switching the many 4-2-5 and 3-3-5 defenses. Off the field, we've seen NIL take off, and with that, I'd say recruiting has become more popular than ever. With all that being said, I thought it would be cool to go back 10 years ago and revisit what college football is like. So it's March 2012. Alabama is coming off their second of back-to-back titles after beating Notre Dame 42-14 in the BCS title game. Nick Saban has three titles in Tuscaloosa, and the word dynasty is starting to get thrown around. Around the country, there are a lot of programs on the rise, but also some going in the other direction. The final AP rankings for the 2012 season were as follows. At number 10, you had Florida State, with Florida at number 9, followed by South Carolina at number 8, and and then Stanford followed them at number 7. Texas A&M finished at number 6 with Heisman Trophy winner Johnny Manziel. Georgia was at number 5, followed by Notre Dame at 4, and undefeated Ohio State at 3. Remember, Ohio State couldn't go to a bowl game due to the ring and tattoo incident with former players. Following Ohio State was the Oregon Ducks sitting at number 2, led by freshman Marcus Mariota. Then at number 1, as previously mentioned, were the national champions of the Alabama Crimson Tide. Three Heisman finalists for 2012 were Johnny Menzel, who won the award. Colin Klein finished second. He had a great year for Kansas State. And then Manti Teo of Notre Dame, who was the best overall defensive player in the country. So now that we know how the season ended and who some of the best players were, let's go back and recap the entirety of the 2012 regular season. Heading into the season, the USC Trojans were atop the rankings at number one in the polls. Led by Matt Barkley and Lane Kiffin, the expectations in Southern California were very high. The number two team in the country and the defending champs Alabama started the season in the Cowboys Classic against the Michigan Wolverines. This game was very lopsided and Alabama beat the 8th ranked Wolverines 41-14. Following week one, despite a win, USC dropped from number one to number two in the polls behind the tide. A big storyline early in the season was when Louisiana Monroe upset the 8th ranked Arkansas Razorbacks in week two. We also saw unranked Oregon State beat top 15 Wisconsin. Following week, in week three, it featured multiple top 25 matchups. The Stanford Cardinal upset the USC Trojans, while Michigan State and Notre Dame faced off in a non conference battle. In week four, we saw the arrival of Kansas State and Colin Klein. They were huge underdogs facing off against the top 10 Oklahoma team. They won a very close game and took control of the Big 12 early in the season. In the ACC, an up and coming Florida State team took on Clemson in a top 10 matchup. The Seminoles beat the Tigers, and this was an indicator of the type of players Jimbo Fisher had. The Pac-12 continued to take shape as third-ranked Oregon took on number 22, Arizona. The Ducks won the game 49-0 and showed their dominance in the conference. Oregon State also got another ranked win as they upset UCLA. There were a lot of question marks surrounding Ohio State after a 6-7 season in 2011. They answered those questions in Week 5 as they beat Michigan State in a top-25 matchup. Along with Ohio State, another monster was quietly being born. Unranked Texas A&M and Johnny Football beat Arkansas 58-10, showing just how lethal they can be. In the Big 12, West Virginia was ranked 9th in the nation, and they played Baylor. The game had no defense to speak of, as the Mountaineers beat the Bears 70-63 in a shootout. At this point in the season, the AP poll looked as such. Alabama was sitting at number 1, followed by Oregon at 2, Florida State at 3, LSU at 4, and Georgia rounded out the top 5. These rankings did not stay this way very long. Teams ranked 3 through 5, all lost in week 6, and this was when the season took a huge spin. There was a common theme growing in the 2012 regular season. A top 25 team would beat a top ranked team just to lose a week or two after. The Florida Gators were quietly having a great first half of the season. They found themselves sitting at number 4 in the polls and were stacking wins at a constant rate. Kansas State was still dominating the Big 12 week by week, and Colin Klein was in the Heisman conversation after beating 17th-ranked West Virginia 55-14. In Week 9, we saw three top 10 teams go down. This was the week where we saw what teams were contenders as the number of two loss teams kept growing. The top two in the polls remained the same with Alabama and Oregon. After a lot of shakeup, Kansas State moved up to number 3, and Notre Dame sat at number 4. Moving forward a week, we got the matchup we were all waiting for. In what would end up being the game of the year, Johnny Menzel and the Texas A&M Aggies traveled to Tuscaloosa to take on the top-ranked Alabama Crimson Tide. As most of you know, this was where Johnny Football was born as he led his team to victory and took control of the Heisman race. 
This game totally opened the door for Oregon, Kansas State, and Notre Dame to get themselves in title contention. Only problem is, the following week was a nightmare for two of those programs. The weekend of November 17, 2012 is one of the more memorable weekends in college football history. On Saturday Night Football, Brett Musburger and Kirk Herbstreit were in Eugene, Oregon as the Stanford Cardinals came to town and took on the number one ranked Oregon Ducks on ABC. At the same time, over on ESPN2, Kansas State was taking on Baylor in Waco, Texas. These games were two highly anticipated matchups with possibly the two teams we would see in the BCS title game. Well, those thoughts changed very quickly, especially for those watching Kansas State. Baylor totally dominated the game, and once they gained momentum, there was no turning back. Shutting down Colin Klein and ending his Heisman hopes was not expected headed into this game, but Baylor did it and won by a score of 52-24. to Back out in Eugene, we saw probably the most uncharacteristic performance of any team all year. Oregon scored a total of 14 points in this game, and it went to overtime. To put this in perspective, the Ducks averaged 50 points per game in 2012, and only scored below 40 points once all season. To put it shortly, the lack of offense cost them a shot at the national title. Following a missed field goal by Oregon to start overtime, Stanford lined up for a game winner and kicked it through the uprights, flipping the world of college football upside down. In one week, the second to last game of the season, we saw number one and number two fall. Stepping in and filling those open spots were Notre Dame and Alabama, sitting at number one and two in the new AP poll. This also set up a number two versus number three matchup with Alabama and Georgia in the SEC championship game. The winner would go on to play Notre Dame in the national title game down in Florida. A very competitive back-and-forth game with huge plays lived up to the hype. Whether it was Alec Ogletree's 50-yard field goal block return for a touchdown or A.J. McCarron's 45-yard touchdown pass to Amari Cooper with three minutes left, this game kept you on the edge of your seat. It all came down to the final drive for Georgia, led by quarterback Aaron Murray and running back Todd Gurley, knowing that a championship is on the line and if they score a touchdown, they're headed to Miami to take on Notre Dame. The Bulldogs were driving, getting into the red zone was roughly 30 seconds left. The clock winding down, Murray and the offense going hurry up. But with around 10 seconds left and no timeouts, Murray threw a pass out to the flat. The ball was tipped and caught in bounds by Georgia for a short gain. That short gain would ultimately end the game and an opportunity to win a championship for Georgia. This meant Alabama was back in the title game, and they showed up and played like a Nick Saban coach team. Dominating Notre Dame in all phases, the Tide won 42-14 and secured their second of back-to-back -back national titles. All in all, the 2012 season was a very memorable one. Growing up watching college football, the nostalgia, legendary players, great rivalries, and atmosphere made me the college football fan I am today. The early 2010s as a whole played a huge role in that. Thank you guys for watching the video. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe. I'll be posting a shorter video that relates to this as well in the coming days. Be sure to check that out when it gets released, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.